Hello, I'm Chris, this is Gross Models, and this is uh, building of a diorama. Uh, I did a Hoth diorama uh, a year ago, and uh, it's time for another one. So this time I'm doing Jakku, uh, another Star Wars one, obviously. Uh, my plan is to be using the Falcon that I built a while back, the video on the channel. Um, so I'll put that to one side. I'll show you what my plan is. Uh, basically, I'm going to have a another sort of rectangular base. Uh, over here will be the falcon, which doesn't look much like that, but you know, gives you the idea. Uh, the base itself isn't going to be dead flat. I'm going to put in some not not hills, but slight terrain differences, just sort of uh, probably in that sort of so it's like a lower bit in the middle and just sort of gently rising a little bit either side not exactly flat obviously not not dead straight either uh somewhere over here i'm going to have the archway uh which you can see at the, the outpost on jacku and down here is going to be a crashed tie fighter uh now the tie fighter itself i've got the the first order set uh, I've just, literally just now, uh, snapped together the normal first order TIE Fighter, uh, which isn't glued, so I can take it apart. Uh, now this is going to be damaged and broken and crashed. So the first thing I need to do is get this, I say, damaged and then painted up. Um, the damage is going to be done similar to some of my other videos that I've done, the sort of learn learn with gross videos uh, I'm going to be using a Dremel to sort of cut away the lower part of the the wings uh, back with damage scratch up cut away little bits you know uh, set fire to bits drill holes and generally knacker it up I'll be using some of the bits broken to sort of lay behind it on the, the terrain but that's the, pl the plan for that I didn't want to paint it first because obviously then I'm going to be cutting bits off uh, so I'll get that cut down I'm not going to show you all of the, the background of everything because I say I've already done videos on how to do what I'm doing so go and have a look at those and uh, other than that uh, I'm also going to be putting a couple of like tarpaulin over there as it was in the film just to cover a couple of couple of areas um, again just because that's closer to how it was in the actual film itself uh, but again, there's a video I've done on that, so go and, go and watch those, catch up on what I have been doing, uh, and when I get to actually building the base itself, I shall come back and show you some of that, but I'm going to get some cutting and drilling done on this, and get some painting. Uh, basically the only paint to do on this is to put the grey on the inside panels and the cockpit area, so I'll get that done, and be back in a moment. The diorama itself is going to be done on a single sheet of... A3 uh, foam core, which is just a plastic with some foam in the middle of it. Just gives a nice, fairly sturdy base without being really heavy. Uh, the falcon is going to go in that corner there, pretty much. I've got it all set up with the legs on, on the ramp. So that's there. Uh, then I'm going to be using some more foam uh, to make the height. This is just some old packing material which you can just cut and glue down. Uh, so basically, it's just gonna be adding a, an extra level of base to most of it. And then I'll be putting some of this uh, hydrocal plaster, uh, which is just a, a modeling plaster. That's powder in there that you just add water to, and then you just smear it on. So I'm gonna get the falcon well out of the way, because I don't wanna get that covered in plaster. Uh, figure out how I'm going to do this, what I'm going to do with it. Um, basically, just got a, a big knife to cut bits off and see what's going to go where. I don't want the whole thing massive, but I need it thicker than, th than this. So, I'm pretty much going to add most of this to it. Uh, trying to think what I'm going to do while I'm doing it. Basically, I haven't got any exact measurements or plans in mind, so. It's just going to be a case of cutting, tearing, if it leaves rough edges, all the more. Because you need rough edges to make it 
So that's pretty much a corner there and a corner there ish. Um, so I do need a little bit more height in the middle. I'm going to see what other uh, foam and packing I've got. I did have, and I still have, if I can reach it now. Oh, there we go. Uh, right, some very thin stuff, which is going to be useful for most of the base. Yeah, so that's pretty much going to cover the inside bit and that covering those. If there's a couple of bits that are lower, that's all the more. When I put the plaster on it, we're going on not very thick, but I'll be layering it up a bit so I can get some variations in height on that there as well. So I think that's probably pretty much it. Um, now the archway, I need to look at some reference pictures to get an idea, but basically, I don't know what I'll be making it out of yet. It might be this. I think, judging, obviously it needs to be roughly to scale. So I'm thinking something like that. Obviously, arch round. Looks to be about the right size when you've got, say, 144 people in the middle. That's about there it was. So probably something like that, that I can obviously then cover in plaster and then put some stone-like cuts in and things like that. Actually, that's probably easier to do now. So basically just that sort of thing, which will give it a an edge of it being stone. I'll put that right in the on the corner there, probably not quite square. Yeah, that's quite on, on camera, but it, square is going to look a bit strange. So I'm going to put it just off, just off square. Uh, use some PVA to get that down, and then see about covering it all in plaster. So I'll get this glued down and see. Uh, just using normal uh, white PVA glue, just to get things down. And uh, yeah, see you in a moment. Right, it looks like rubbish at the moment, but I'm hoping it will be all right. Uh, the archway I've done. I put a couple of cocktail sticks in the middle to hold it in place while the, the glue sets. Um, obviously I've got the, the side built up, the main middle piece. I put a couple of offcuts on just to create some height variance there. And obviously the bit around the side there. I left the big patch over there mostly empty because that's where the falcon's going to sit anyway. Um, I have just run some PVA over, say in bit, sorry for the shaky cam, but um, to sort of blend in the edges a little bit and to add some variation to height various across bits not in any particular order just you know dribbling it wherever uh, as I say the plaster is going to cover it anyway but it gives it a better feel hopefully it will make a difference if it doesn't it doesn't but that's why we do these things to learn uh, once I've covered it in plaster and got some variation in there I'll be using the desert sand um, okay diorama which I say hopefully will give us nice texture everywhere and then we'll see how it goes we're putting the bits in the um, TIE fighter nice contrast with the black there uh, I've cut bits off the wings drilled holes you know uh, bent bits generally knackered it up so I'll get that reassembled when that's dry and painted up and so say just got to do the the gray on there really and then add some damage and uh, not damage paint paint damage make it look old and knackered and then we'll go from there and see how it goes so see you soon when this is dry there's the tie fighter uh, cut up painted up smashed up uh, I still need to do a bit more work on there and add some paint of damage uh, this is basically just gone over with the grey and the black just to bring out the details and the panels um, you can see where I've scratched it and scored it and obviously cut it so it'll sit not quite there but pretty much like that let me move the camera around so you can see uh, that's going to sit like that over in this corner over here there you go and uh, the falcon's going to be over there so that's that's that uh, now I've got the other off cut bits as well which are sort of positioned behind it and again dirty up and make look nasty uh, what I'm going to do now is start on some uh, sort of plaster 
for that. So I've got a pot, I've got some water, and I've got the plaster. Uh, what I haven't got, or haven't got to hand, is a little stirring stick, which I have got here. There we go. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to do is pour in some of this. There we go. I'm going to keep this to hand because I'll probably end up putting in too much water. Let's move the camera out a bit so I can see what I'm doing and hopefully you can see what I'm doing as well. Uh, I'm basically just going to pour in some water. I'm getting it everywhere as well but this is always going to be messy. And pretty much stir it in. Uh, now this container is disposable basically. It's oh, getting plaster everywhere. Uh, it's like an old meal pot or something, ready meal, microwave something. So I'm not worrying about making sure I can reuse it afterwards because you're never going to get all the plaster out. Don't you, don't use your best crockery. So I'm getting this mixed up so it's not powdery anymore. You can probably just about sort of see what you're doing in there. Now this does set relatively quickly, but not that quickly. And so I don't know if I use the right quantities or everything. This is obviously still very liquid, although there's still quite a lot of powder there as well. So it's a tricky combination of getting it right. And it's been a while since I've done this, so I've got no memory of how much and how little. But that still seems, oh, it's not far off actually. Maybe a little bit powdery, a little bit liquid still, but there's probably powder sticking to the sides and around the bottom that I didn't need to get worked in. So let's get that scraped down and in. And then just see how it moves. Yeah, it's still a bit liquid. So let's get in some more. Bet this goes the other way now, so you watch. This will be too too solid once I get this worked in, hopefully it will be about right. Uh, now this is going to take several layers and levels to get how I, how I want this to be. So what I'm actually going to do with this first lot is basically just sort of pour it not not into the, directly into the middle, but not around the edges either, because I haven't got any paper down or anything for this yet, and it's still going to want to go everywhere. So this is not a large quantity that I've mixed up. Again, not having much clue as to how much of it and everything is going to take. So that's actually moving now a little bit thicker. So I'm I'm happy to go with that, I think. Let's just give it a last little stir. It's going to take a lot more than this to make up the actual base. Which needs to be built up in layers anyway. So what I'm going to do, um, you can just about see where I am here. I'm going to basically spread it around and see how it covers up the the bits that I'm building up to get them set down. Now hopefully you can see how it pretty much stays where you put it. And so if you've got any, any visualisation on that as to how much I mixed up and how little it's actually covered. I'm going to be doing this for a while. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to film all of it, all of it, because you know, you've got better things to watch, and I've got better things to try and do. So I'm going to get this done over the course of the next however long. Uh, this doesn't actually take very long to set. Uh, this stuff says that working time is five minutes. Um, so uh, yeah, it, it does give you measurements of how much to pour in, but that means measuring, which yeah, I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to let that dry, mix up some more, and keep going and doing a bit here and there. Uh, when I've got decent coverage of it, then I'm going to start worrying about getting bits in where I want them to be and building up around them a little bit. So I'll uh, see you when that's there. And there we have the layout basically finished. I'm not leaving it, it's not stuck there, it's just laid on top. Uh, just to get an idea, there's a big dead area in the middle but I'm not sure I don't really want to bring that any further in but I might have to I'm going to play around with the, the composition a little bit 
Uh, I did basically push this into the, the plaster when it was wet and I've stuck these bits in mostly although they're not that stuck in um, just to give an idea as to how it's going to be uh, so that could no I don't want it too close I think I might use a couple of my uh, characters in there as well just to give a bit of scale that'll bring it that'll break up the, the centerpiece a little bit so yeah that's what I'm going to do with that and I'm going to put a couple of tops over, over the, the falcon as well uh, right I need to uh, get this painted up basically uh, get it primed up I'm going to leave it to dry to be sure it's actually dry it's only just uh, finished with the last coat of plaster over it let me get the falcon out of the way and you can see it in its glory um, basically there's lumps of plaster everywhere and everything else it looks rough but it's not meant to look smooth that's the whole idea uh, so I'm going to give this a, a primer uh, go over it in a I think I'll use a grey primer so they're not going to see exactly what I've done uh, and then tidy up some of the bits a little bit here and there first uh, once it's primed I will paint the archway in stone uh, I've got a couple of stone colours like greys and things and give that a bit of texture and then I shall be using the desert sand acrylic diorama base uh, across all of it I'll do that without the ships on it obviously I can paint around these bits gently uh, and then I need to get these weathered properly aged and knackered and then get the falcon stuck on and then get the um, tops over the top so that was about there got a couple of little marks that I can see where I've pushed it onto the wet stuff so I can see whereabouts it's going to have to go back and all in all it's coming there it's getting there uh, as I say I'm leaving it to dry then get it primed and a couple of the, the, the feature painted up and then the rest of it as we go that's it primed I've also gone over lightly with some of the uh, mecha primer sand primer uh, I don't think any of the primer color is going to come through the desert sand but it doesn't hurt to have a bit of variation underneath anyway and see, see what happens uh, let me put another get another light in the right place so we can see what we're doing uh, right I have got let's say this uh, desert sand which I'm trying out for the first time uh, I'm using a, a fairly big old brush and I'm just going to put some on and sort of see how it comes out it's got a slight texturing to it so it does actually it's not just you know yellow paint it has got a apparently sandy texture so I'm just gonna as Ted would say slap some of it on I'm just gonna do a patch and then let that dry and see how it looks I deliberately picked a bit that's sort of near an edge where it's got some variations of some smooth bits and some rough bits and yeah the primer is not going to come through at all on this this is just going to come through nice and yellow so once it's done I will be not so much painting it but going over some bits with some paint just to give some more texture and shadow and shading so I'm going to get say a bit of this done I don't know if the brush is going to be any good afterwards so I don't know how much of this pot is actually going to get used I don't think it will need any more than one coat it might need a little bit of touching up here and there but I don't think it will need any more coverage because it's quite quite thick so I'm going to get I say a bit of this done a bit with some lumpy bits and some smooth bits and then let it dry and then we'll see how it looks so I shall continue on with this and I'll see you in a moment I'm actually quite happy with how that's come out it is going to need going over maybe not a, a complete coverage but there's definitely some patches that have missed uh, there's a couple of bits that have come out quite clear which is quite nice but lots of it come out just that little bit grainy just like sand so I'm going to carry on and get all that done and as I say get the archway painted which you can't see on shot at the moment but it's still there. Uh, 
I'll get that done and when that's laid in I'll um, come back and show you and we'll see about getting some shading and things on there to make it look a bit more more realistic so I'll see you in a moment with it all covered it looks quite good I'm quite happy with that it's not quite dry but I need to get some of this other crash bit in before it fully dries anyway so what I'm doing is basically with a Starship Filth oil brusher I'm just adding a bit of muck now this uh, if you've never used Starship Filth before it's lovely for starships and making it look like it's horrible so basically I'm giving it just a light covering sort of around the edges some of it's going to be covered anyway and I can always touch up more once it's in uh, I'm actually then wiping away and smearing some of it just with a bit of tissue just to give a different effect and that is just going to be sort of jammed in around there somewhere uh, the ship's coming in sort of that way so it's coming I have that bit about there now what I'm doing is using some more of the desert sand and hopefully that is going to give me enough uh, sort of stickiness if I can have sort of almost, almost a lump of this paint and that wedge there like that sorry just off the edge you can't really see it let's move around sort of like that uh, it might not work if it doesn't work then when I try and move it once it's set uh, it will come out but it will still leave the groove there I can put some PVA in there and stick it in more securely uh, so I'm going to do that with basically all of the bits of TIE Fighter and the the main body of the TIE Fighter itself which I've already got the grooves for down here oh, there we go that's the grooves for down there uh, so I'm going to get it mostly dirtied up I can always add extra around and I'm going to be adding some uh, marks to the terrain as well so it sort of cause more damage uh, the falcon itself is going to go over the other corner over that way uh, but I'll worry about that later I'm going to get this done first so uh, yeah basically doing just what you see me do there to some more of it get some paint blobbed in get the bit that I've already done the oil wash bit on like that uh, so I'm going to get the other bits done get the, the ship itself done and then move on to the next stage that's where we've got to at the moment I've updated the crash ship I've actually glued it in place so it's not, not moving anywhere now and I've glued in the other bits I've touched up a couple of bits you might be able to see some slightly different coloured some lighter colour on the sand uh, basically just touched up especially around where the glue was although I used PVA it's gone clear so you can still see it so I've touched up around there I need to do a little bit more inside the back there where the uh, plaster cracked a little bit as I was pushing that in uh, but now I have also added probably just about make it out on there uh, some more sort of detailed weathering where I dremeled out and skipped across the edge I've added some sort of starship filth and some dark washes into that uh, now I've got some metal slag that I'm going to add as well this is a, a powder that I'm using a, a very old brush on uh, so basically it's just a say a powder that just sort of makes everything look a bit worn and old so I'm carefully no, I say carefully not very carefully but just a bit dusting over the top of this and then <laughs> blowing away the bits that have stuck flip drop down because I don't want them all over the sand underneath but this makes the edges look rough nice and just sort of adding it into some crevices and stuff you can see as it hits the sand that it looks a bit rough <laughs> it doesn't matter there's some left behind but obviously I don't want don't want it everywhere basically uh, so I'm going to get that done touch up the rest of the sand where that needs some attention uh, then I'm going to uh, use 
a couple of different lighter colours, the, the, the sand primer that I used underneath and then basically covered over completely. I need to re-go over with that to make it uh, so a little bit graduated, some of the, the high points just dusting over. It looks different at the moment, it looks like some nice high points but that obviously won't once it's dry. It'll be exactly the same colour underneath. Turn that round a bit so I can get to the other side there. Uh, I'm doing this uh, powder now because I know it is going to leave some marks around. Now some right up close I'm not worried about but there are some other bits where I don't want it to be that where it's going to get left. So once this is dried I'll give it a good blow over with the airbrush just to get rid of the very loose bits and then I do need to go over again as I say on the bit inside with the sand paint and I'll also be using that to hide up any loose bits of this that's still there or that have got stuck to the paint itself basically just giving this a good covering over just to darken it down and make it look old and knackered uh, I did change my plan I was going to uh, light this and have a smoke plume coming off of it, like a cotton wool sort of plume, but I couldn't get it to look right. I was, I've been playing around with sort of test pieces and things, trying to get it right, and I've just not been happy with it. So I'm actually not going to do that now. I'm going to leave this as a, a sort of older abandoned crash rather than a new, you know, just crashed. So this is, I say, going to not not be you know decades old, but it it crashed yesterday or the day before or something. So it's not a new, just crashed. Uh, if I can get that round again. Move the camera a bit so you can still see what I'm doing with this. Uh, the lighting is not great over in this corner, unfortunately. Uh, right, as I say, I'm not going to do all of this on camera anyway. So I'll get this done. Let the paint dry on there and then add in some highlights to it and then we'll see where we are for getting the falcon on. Oh, excuse me, knocking the camera. Uh, right, so I'll see you in a moment. I'm fairly happy with that, that's come out quite well. I've also, because I've bought some, uh, used some uh, Vallejo Mecca weathering, uh, desert dust, wa dust wash. Uh, just sort of generally sprayed over everything and I have used some uh, fuel stains petrol spills and oil stains uh, just on bits just sprayed over again bits of it here and there I have uh, put a little blob of fuel underneath I uh, probably can't really see, you can see it a little bit uh, as if it sort of just sort of leaked out the bottom really since it's been sitting there uh, and yeah the falcon it's the falcon is ne the next bit which is going to go about there uh, I've got to figure out exactly where it's going to sit with the feet. I've got one lump there that that foot's going to go on and try and get it basically so all of the feet are actually in contact at least a little bit. I did have it somewhere quite nice and I think it's going to be about there. Sorry I know you can't see it very well. Uh, the ramp is not quite in contact but that's not too bad either because I don't think it would go anywhere. I am going to add some more of the sand paint around here as well, uh, but I'm going to just use some PVA to get it to sit and stay where we want it to be. So basically I'm just going to put a little bit on each of the feet. I will be getting some of the sand paint in underneath there anyway, sort of around some of them where it would have landed and probably sort of pushed it up a little bit uh, so excuse me if I can't show you exactly what I'm doing here just trying to get it back to where I had it which is about there um, deliberately made so it is sort of overhanging the edge a little, little bit that side I didn't like it all being sort of too square and looking right so that I'm going to leave to dry. I'm going to get some more 
paint in there and I've decided to add the three characters that will go well in this display. Uh, I'm going to put them in place basically using the, the sand paint and some more PVA. So I'm going to get rid of the blue tack that I was using on the bottom of them. Uh, I'm going to put some of the sand paint afterwards. Uh, again, just a, a dab of PVA uh, as if they've sort of landed and are coming to have a look at the, the ship over there. So BB-8 is going to be well in front and they're going to be sort of following. Sort of like that. Just to add a little bit of interest in the middle and obviously being people sized it adds a good sense of scale as well. As you can just see how big the ship is, how small the other ship is. Uh, so once they're on, a um, little bit more sort of uh, fine touch up and weathering and uh, then that will be almost it I've got to add, then add the top awnings to the, the Falcon itself it might not quite fit in with the they just landed to come and look at this thing no I have to rethink the story maybe I'll have them going the other way maybe they're just going to investigate the ship and that just happened to be crashed in the background I'll figure out a story in my head so I'll uh, wait for that to dry add the paintwork around, get them in the right place and then be ready to go with the top. I do want to do the top because I think it'll add a, an element to it that's slightly unusual. So I'll, I'll figure out what, I'm gonna, what story I'm going to tell. I'll uh, see you in a moment. While I'm waiting for the paint to dry on the, the figures, the sand paint that I've headed up around the edge, I'm going to start with the top all-ins. Now I've got two little squares but if you see them next to people size, they're obviously huge squares. Uh, I figure I'm going to put one sort of over the a bit of the canopy, sort of like that, and one over the engine again, a bit, sort of like that. Now they obviously won't go like that, so what I'm going to do is use some PVA and some water and mix up basically a thin PVA. What I'm just going to do is pour some water in there as well. Don't know how much. We'll figure it out as we go along. I'm going to mix that up and hopefully just give us a, a paste. It's mostly water so it's very thin. I think that will probably do it. It's obviously not doesn't feel sticky or anything because it's mostly just water now but when that dries that should give us a level of stickiness and thickness that might work we'll try and see uh, now into that I'm going to add some sandy color I'm going to use some of this uh, desert wash and the sand primer as well just to give some different finishes a different colour to the, the sand itself but still looking like a, a dusty tarpaulin that's been thrown over it so that isn't a bad colour I don't think when it goes on to this it's not going to be exactly the same colour anyway it's not going to exactly cover it so it will seem a bit whiter, or quite a lot whiter I think, than that. Now this is basically tissue paper, so it's not highly absorbent either. But I'm hoping it's not going to go you know, overly thin. So that is now, it might actually be going a bit too thin and transparent. I might have to do some painting on it while it's in place. So I can paint over the top of it without too much of a problem. That pretty much what I'm going for. It's pushing it into the recesses and covering obviously a bit hanging down there as well. You can't really see on that angle. That's 
bring the camera around, sorry for the jerkiness. So that is pretty much that. Hopefully, I say once it dries it will go back a bit more transparent, but I can always paint over the top of it if need be. I'm going to do the same again with the one at the back. Hopefully it's going to work just as well. I don't think it's going to add the colour that I really want, but we'll see. Get that uncovered, dripping a bit, but I can't prevent that really. Not going for neat, because it's obviously not going to be a neat, you know, it's just been thrown over. Let's get it to sort of bed down a bit around things. It's obviously at the scale that I'm working, it would be bedded down a little bit more. So actually I'm going to see if I can just add some more to it. Not exactly pouring it over the top, but just adding a little bit more liquid just to get that to settle down. I'm pretty sure that's not going to colour in the colour that I'm after. Because I don't think the tissue paper was quite as absorbent as I'd hoped. So I'm definitely going to have to go in and repaint over that once it's dry. Let's see how it goes. I might be able to take it back off once it's dry and set. I'll try that in a few hours and we'll see how it goes. But uh, that's basically the top all over the top. I still need to get in and do some more detail work as well around it. Get a bit more sand in under the feet. But that's not, not a million miles off of the effects I was looking for. Just covering over a bit as if it's been not completely covered but just protected from the elements a little bit maybe. I've got a while to work with it and just tease little bits here and there. So I'm going to carry on doing that while it's drying and then we'll come back and show you it when it's painted up. One of the big problems with this scale is making it look real. So any little touches you can do that will make it uh, sort of grounded and make it look a little bit more <coughs> realistic always worth trying. So what I thought I'd try and do, which might not work, but you never know, is adding a little bit more realism and texture. So what I'm doing is adding some more of this sand paint behind where our characters have come. And I'm going to see if we can't just add some footprints behind them. Again, not going to be going all the way, not going silly with it, just a bit. Now what I've done is got a cocktail stick and I've cut the end off and filed the sides down a little bit. <coughs> now I'm going to try and get in closer to see what I'm doing. Uh, so the end of it is about foot sized. So I'm hoping that I can just leave some indentations in the paint just to suggest that there's some footprints behind them possibly trailing off and coming back a little bit so it's not quite so bold obviously a little bit bolder up next to them but getting a little bit fainter as the sand might have blown behind them and that might not come out very well but it does add a little something what I did forget is BV-8 has been there as well hasn't he so he's going to need similar but he's going to need a sort of a groove rather than a footprint 
so actually I can use the same bit but sideways hopefully it just gives the impression of some movement behind them behind her came out really well his ones are not quite so good let me just go over a couple of them closer to there we go just to add a little something when that's dry I'll see if I can possibly uh, add a little bit of texture to it, a little bit of uh, darkening inside the steps to bring them out a little bit more as if they're say fresher but that hopefully would give just a I keep saying hopefully sorry about that but that should give a little bit more grounding a little bit more realism it's all in the details so uh, we'll see how that looks when it's dried that's dried on there and it's dried so well that it's not going to lift off as I hoped it might so I'm going to paint it in place uh, I've mixed up a colour uh, I've added the sand and desert dust wash I've also added some cement grey just to darken it down a little bit to make it a little bit more so similar colour to the, the sand but different uh, so basically I'm just going to brush paint this on I did consider spraying it but I figured the masking would be a right pain so I'm going to carefully I'm just doing the, the body bit of it while I'm talking to you going over the main body of it I'll obviously go in closer and be more careful doing the edges just going to get these coloured in I'm going to do this one this colour <coughs> then I'm going to mix the the shading up a little bit to do the other one and if you might not have noticed I've actually put another one on the floor down here as if it's sort of fallen off or blown off from the the top there as well so a little bit of painting to do and then some final weathering and then that should be this diorama complete obviously I'll come back and show you some more once it's at another stage so I'll see you in a moment that's the tarpaulins done uh, they're dry so they're actually pretty solid now and I quite like them like the colors come out quite well on so I've got the one laying on the floor draped over the back and draped over the cockpit it adds a little bit of personalization to it uh, the footprints have come out quite well as well I've uh, put a little bit of uh, darkening to them to make them stand out a little bit as well but apart from that we're almost almost there uh, what I'm going to do now is use some of the, the desert dust wash and basically just spray it over everything a little bit add a little bit more weathering and sort of as if sand and desert dust has just sort of blown over everything just to ground it all together into one one place rather than having individual elements uh, so once that's done uh, I will also uh, have a play around before I do that um, and add some shading to the sand I've, I've added a little bit of darker browns to a couple of bits and some of the lighter sand color to a couple of other bits but I don't think it's quite quite there yet I, I think I need it a little bit more obvious uh, so I'm going to do that and then as I say add up the the detail I'm going to uh, add the, the ramp down here I've got the sand around it but I think I'm going to add some sort of dusty footprints going up it as well because it's obviously been open for a while so I need to add some uh, more detail to that but that will be that um, I'll get it all done and then I'll get it on a I don't know about a turntable it's a bit big for a turntable but I'll get you some uh, some shots of it once it's completed and good to go so I shall see you in a moment for the finished article and I'm calling that done uh, all in all, it's come out pretty much how I envisioned it was going to. I'll start the. I've been able to get it on the turntable, but I don't think it will display particularly well on the turntable because you'll be looking at 
different bits of it but uh, all in all I've enjoyed doing it it's been good it's come out pretty much how I intended it was going to to begin with uh, the TIE fighter uh, uh, shame I didn't actually manage to get that lit and the smoke coming off of it I will continue figuring out how to get that done and may come back and uh, adapt it or may in introduce it into a different diorama at, at some later date but uh, yeah it's nice I like it everything's come out I say pretty much how I envisioned it uh, obviously as ever with my builds there's always tweaks on the way but uh, I quite like the the tarpaulins come out very well I'm happy with how that looks I'm not sure about the color on the front one that looks a bit like brown tape maybe I'd have gone a little bit different on that but everything else is okay the one thing that I would do differently and correct is getting the the falcon to sit onto the the plaster okay uh, I couldn't because it's not flat I had to get everything built up around it a bit <coughs> so what I would do in the future would be to uh, have a layer of the plaster uh, while it's still mostly wet and make sure I get the falcon pushed into it to to bed down the the feet into it so it's actually sunk into the sand rather than conveniently landing on little blobs of it but apart from that it's okay uh, if I could have had the smoke then I would have introduced more uh, recently crashed look to it to the the TIE fighter over there but I can't have everything I, the last minute adding of the the people in the in the middle middle piece again adds a little focus focal point to it uh, if I didn't have them to put into it then I probably would have just made the diorama a little bit shorter a little bit narrower so there's not that dead space in the middle or move the falcon a bit closer to the middle as well but I think being a desert I wanted to make it look like it was bigger than it really is uh, I'm gonna move the camera around to get a, a different angle in as it's rotating around there uh, so the lighting is not ideal around here because it's just too big uh, but the falcon I'm sure you've seen before when I built it uh, other than adding the sand weathering to it it's exactly the same as it was before uh, the top all and say came out as I intended uh, I do have uh, how-to videos on doing the top all in which I pretty much use the same technique also the damage to the tie fighter I've got a video of more how to do that so I didn't go into too much of that this time around there's no point in showing you stuff that you can see again uh, but all in all I'm happy with it as I've said countless times just now so I'll stop talking uh, thanks for watching hope you've enjoyed the the diorama there uh, catch my other builds and the the other diorama that I did the Hoth diorama um, I'm equally happy with both of them should we say so uh, as ever, I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you subscribe to the channel and come back for more builds and different things from time to time. And uh, I shall see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.